Hey guys, it's Andrew Mantu. Um, today we're going to be discussing the poem London Summer Morning by Mary Robinson. Um, this is a poem that grabbed a lot of interest out of me, and it's the one I've decided to talk about with you guys. I think it has some really interesting elements worth talking about. We're going to be talking about the poem um, by, ele by each category of elements, like whether it be imagery or alliteration. We're going to be going it by. We're going to be discussing it like that. Not chronologically, line by line, but by each element. And we'll start first with the element of imagery, one of that first quality of um, poems. There's a lot of there's a lot of imagery in this poem, and something interesting I noticed is that a lot of poems that we read in this unit had a lot of visual imagery, but this one also includes touch touch and auditory imagery. I'll, let you, I'll read you guys the fir the um, first few lines of the poem. You could get to see a good example of it here. Who has not waked to list the busy sounds of summer morning in the sultry smoke of noisy London? On the pavement hot, the sooty chimney boy with dingy face and tattered covering shrilly balls his trade. We already see both forms of, Im of sensory imagery with busy sounds of summer's morning and pa the pavement hot. We get to see, you know, temperature and touch, but we're also getting to see a lot of auditory Im imagery. And that's something we'll be talking about just a little bit more in a second, because there's a lot of it, a lot of auditory imagery. And I think it's because the poem takes place. It, it's describing a busy city where there's going to be lots of sounds. Um, another th interesting thing about this poem is that there are very, there's very little to no simile, and or there's only a single metaphor, but metaphors are almost entirely absent from the poem, but I think that's intentional. From what I gathered reading her bio, the biography of, of Mary Robinson, she seemed to be really, she seemed to be really interested in the lives and the conditions of middle class and lower class people, almost some slight themes of social justice, like she, she was very interested in what people's lives were like in a city, not just the rich, not just the elites, not just the kings and queens. She was very interested in people as they were and the common people. And the reason she, do I don't think she uses metaphors, the reason she doesn't liken the people in their day-to-day -day lives to bigger things like maybe myths or gods or elements of nature is because she believes that des des describing people as they are, describing the London city people as they are, as authentically as possible, is beautiful and worthy of a poem. She believes she doesn't have to um, liken them to something bigger for them to matter. She believes they have value as they are. There's there's not a whole lot of themes of like, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't seem to be suggesting that their lives are terrible or that their lives should be changed. Just that, you know, it's worth talking about as they are. Her other poem was a lot more, had a lot more things about social justice with the French Revolution and all, but this poem's different. This poem's different, though. Um, something very interesting. I thought she, another really interesting element that really, that she really um, does well in the poem is alliteration. Using consonants, is using, ta using consonants to create a really busy sound. Let me read you guys uh, just a few lines of this. She says, now begins the din of hackney coaches, wagons, carts, while tin men's shops and noisy trunk makers, knife grinders, coopers, squeaking cork cutters, fruit barrows, and the hunger-giving cries of vegetable vendors fill the air. Wow, that was a lot of syllables. I think that's also intent. That's also intentional. By using really busy language and lots and lots of sounds. She literally, through her choice of words, is uh, is recreating the sound of a city. You know, city like London was probably was I'm sure it was from what I've seen a very busy town with lots of things happening at once, and with all of these consonants happening back to back to back, it recreates that just for the for just for the use of like high consonant words. It's a really incredible example of alliterations. There is one. There is one. I guess you would, you, yeah, there is one slight simile that we have in the last third of the poem, I would say. It says, now spruce and trim in shops where beauty smiles with industry sits the smart damsel. It's an interesting line, where beauty sits, smiles with industry. Beauty is described as something that has a face because it can smile. 
And I had to reread them a few lines to discover, like, wait, what is she talking about? Where is the beauty? Like, what, like, where's the beauty? And the beauty is in the shops. And I think that's interesting because a lot of the romantic po poets seem to have a lot of, the rom other romantic poets seem to have a lot more interest in nature. They thought that's, that's where beauty was. But with this single metaphor that she uses in this, in this poem, Robinson seems to be suggesting that, um, suggesting that there's beauty even in the city, even in the urban life, there's beauty there too. The people, the jobs, the industry, the businesses, there's even beauty in that because it's an extension of humanity. It may not have nature, but it's got people and people are valuable. And that's what makes the city, even the city beautiful. And that is, those are my notes, my thoughts on Mary Robinson's um, Mary Robinson's summer London summer morning looking forward to hearing what you guys thought about it